Hey traders, it's John Fortune here with this week's weekly Forex forecast. I hope everybody's having a great weekend. Last week we had US CPI and also an interest rate decision out of the UK and both of those were catalysts to the upside for the DXY. We'll look at that briefly in the economic calendar. And you can see coming towards the end of the week, we started to break out of this inverse head and shoulders pattern and I'm looking for this to continue with momentum into next week. Okay, so a very quick look at the economic calendar from last week because there were two events last week which caused the dollar to rally and these are things we need to consider going into this week and it's why I do think we can see a continued move to the upside in the dollar. And actually dollar long plays are setting up as some of the better plays next week. So we did have CPI coming out and we also had the UK interest rate decision. I'll explain why this was important for the dollar as well. In terms of CPI, we did have headline coming down and this was actually one of the main talking points of last week. CPI continues to come down, inflation is dead, et cetera, et cetera. But what was more interesting last week was the month over month readings because the month over month readings are more sensitive to showing you what the current trend is in inflation as opposed to the year on year. And so the month on month data is actually slightly more important when assessing near term inflation. And you can see that we actually had, when you look at this reading, Despite the fact many talking heads were looking at this as a fantastic print, you can see that core CPI month on month came out exactly the same as the previous month. Now, don't forget the Federal Reserve are looking to get inflation down and core CPI increased 0.4% on a month over month basis, exactly the same amount as it increased the month before that. And when we look at headline CPI month on month, we actually saw an acceleration month on month. Previously, CPI headline inflation month on month increased at 0.1% and last month it actually printed at 0.4%. So we got core inflation failing to actually come down or slowing month on month and we've got headline inflation actually accelerating. And this was one of the things that catalyzed that pop in the dollar. And I said to members at the time, look, I do expect the dollar to pop off this. We should be focused on those risk off setups. And in fact, it was the risk off setups that paid very, very nicely off this last week. Now, if we have a look at the UK interest rate decision, the reason this is important is because a second thing I also discussed with the members last week was that when we saw the ECB failing to outhawk the Fed by going 50 basis points, we saw an underperformance almost straight away since then in the euro versus the dollar. And I did point out, look, with the UK, it's likely on balance to be pretty similar. We're going to see a 25 basis points. However, we could very well see the pound sell off. Why? Because as the UK or the Bank of England fail to go 50 basis points for the first opportunity they get, this is just like with the ECB previously, the first opportunity that they get to outhawk the Fed as the Fed goes 25, they go 50. And the failure for the ECB to do that resulted in the euro selling off. And now we've seen exactly the same happen with the pound. So last week was very significant because it did mark the point at which the G7 major currencies started to see outflows into the dollar as traders realized that the Bank of England and the ECB are not actually going to outhawk the Fed. And we started to see a reversal of that relative hawkish play coming in last week. And finally, the third very important thing to take away last week was unemployment claims. Came out with quite a big miss to the upside, 264 versus 245, which was, as you can see up here in the middle column, is the consensus or the forecasted. And the reason this was significant because it was the first time we really saw a softening of the labor market in terms of the claims. Remember, these are week over week, so they are more sensitive. They tend to lead the unemployment rate and everything else. So when you look at this, you know, non-farm payrolls is month over month. So we're getting this data more often and we actually started to see an acceleration in the trend to the upside. And this also, alongside the other two points that we've just discussed for the dollar, this also helped catalyze the dollar higher because as the unemployment claims start to rise and they get into the 280, 300,000, this is recession territory. It's where you start to see the dollar catching a bid as a safe haven asset. So three things last week, which helped catalyze the dollar to the upside. And it's why going into this week, I favor dollar long plays as some of the best opportunities. Very quickly in terms of this week, there isn't really anything we need to pay attention to in terms of short-term trading. So we have a pretty clear run at the markets this week.
Okay, so let's look at the scores for the coming week. We do have the Swiss franc still in the top position, even though this did come off of plus four. So and since we saw that, we did get a near-term top in the Swiss franc. It's not as short. That was an opportunity to book some profits on longs. And it is holding up again this week. We also have the pound, which is weakening in the scorecards. So it's essentially peaking from three to two. And the euro also peaking as we go from two to zero. Now, this is significant because it's not just about the absolute scores here. We're also looking for the direction of travel, the momentum. So we can get ahead of potential moves in these markets. For example, if the euro is going from two to zero, there's a good chance with this kind of momentum in the scorecards that we could end up down here, you know, over the next four weeks. So we're anticipating that. This is why momentum is important as well as the absolute score. So going into next week, it is the momentum that I'm paying most attention to here. And if we look at this, we can still see the Australian dollar is setting up as one of the best shorts. The Japanese yen is still bearish in the scorecards. So what we're seeing here is we're not quite seeing a major risk off move just yet. What we're seeing is money flowing back into the dollar as we get, especially the majors now, failing to outhawk the US or the Federal Reserve. So that's really what we're seeing at the moment. If we start to see the Japanese yen increasing its score or troughing in the scorecards here, this will be a sign of overall much larger risk off and we could start to see stocks coming down much harder. However, as it currently stands, this is more just a flow into the dollar. So going into next week, to cut a long story short here with the scores, I do favor first and foremost the US dollar because of what we've discussed and because of the momentum to the upside in the scorecards. It looks like we are going to see the US dollar in the positive side of the scorecards over the next few weeks. So on that basis, I do like first and foremost Aussie dollar to the downside. I also like US dollar yen to the upside and I like US dollar CAD to the upside. I also like Euro dollar to the downside. Why? Because not only do we have plus two in the dollar, so it's getting stronger, we actually have minus two in the euro. So they're evenly matched, but the direction of travel in both is in the opposite direction. So those dollar pairs are going to be my top plays going into next week. You can also look at New Zealand dollar and even potentially pound dollar because pound dollar is also peaking. So the direction of travel is this way. However, I do favor, you know, more the commodity currencies and also even the euro because of this heading into next week. So we'll look at those dollar pairs. I think that's where we're most likely going to get the best opportunity to make money next week. And I also like, because the pound is peaking and because the New Zealand is a commodity currency, which should, it's not particularly bullish anyway, and it should soften a bit, you know, if the dollar does strengthen. The only other long play here that I really like currently is the Swiss franc. So I would also be interested in Swiss franc long plays, especially Aussie franc to the downside we'll look at, franc yen to the upside, and also CAD franc to the downside I'll be interested in next week. Okay, so let's have a look at the individual currency starting with the dollar. And I have been highlighting this failure to break the low over here, this kind of double bottom. So we have two patterns here which are developing. And we now have one of them, the smaller one here, actually breaking out off of the back of those kind of bullish catalysts we discussed earlier on. The first big pattern here, the major pattern developing is, so when you have patterns, there's two kind of conditions for these patterns. First, you have the pattern developing, but not yet confirmed. And then once the pattern breaks, that's called a confirmed pattern. So we've got two patterns here. We've got a developing double bottom, which is not confirmed until we break this high over here. And we also have on the right bottom, an inverse head and shoulders, which is also a reversal pattern, which is confirmed. So was developing last week, now confirmed with this momentum break. And this is signifying further upside. And there's a very good chance we actually end up coming back over to this high. And of course, when we break here, this then we do have to look at as a major breakout to the upside. And we'll be looking over here for momentum to see if this pattern really is going to succeed, just as we're starting to break through here with momentum. So again, with everything discussed, I am bullish on the dollar next week. I think it's going to be one of the best plays next week. Next is the Euro. The Euro has now failed to break above this high with momentum. And this is something I've been looking at in previous videos with you. I have stated, I do think the Euro is coming back down to its lows. 
I know when we were testing the highs, you know, this seems unlikely and people talking about bigger breakouts in the euro. But these things take time to develop and now we're seeing for the first time and you'll be surprised how quickly these narratives can change once you start to see some momentum to the downside. You know, people who were bearish on the dollar not too long ago, you know, you get a bit of bullish momentum and they'll suddenly be bullish. So this is really to keep our eye on the forest for the trees here, to be looking at this to say, okay, the overall likelihood is we come back down to the lows. And now for the first time, we're starting to break with momentum. The next overall target is actually the previous low. But again, once we break this, we've now broken a major double top. And so this will be the next kind of area we have to look at to see whether we break with momentum, which will confirm the next likely move down to the low. Or of course, if you start to fail here and then this just becomes an overall range and then the threat of a major breakout to the upside is on. However, I do think this is unlikely. Why? Because of the macro backdrop, which is negative globally. And of course, this actually points towards a stronger dollar, not uh, a stronger euro. Next is the pound. The pound is starting to trade back down below the major breakout level. I did highlight in previous videos that this was a major breakout to the upside, but that I believe this was going to fail. And yes, we get some volatility. Yes, we push a little bit higher. But overall, when we look at the bigger picture, I did say to you, I think this is going to fail. And also we're likely to come back down to the lows in a bigger risk off move over the end of this year. And this could very well be the start. We need a little bit further to go. We need to see how this reacts next week. But going into next week, you can see it's not quite bearish, technically speaking, but we are starting to see momentum come to the downside. And once we break back down below this low, which was the major breakout area, all these traders or a number of these traders who traded the breakout, they will see this and they will start to liquidate. So there's a good chance we start to come down actually uh, a little bit harder next week in the pound. Next is the Swiss franc. The Swiss franc actually peaked in the scorecards and went from plus four to plus three. And that signaled as we pushed into the highs, that signaled that we should be looking for a near term top and exactly as the scorecards are designed to do. They did lead this and we started to see a correction. Now, I am not significantly bearish on the Swiss franc. I'm just viewing this as a near term top of correction. Maybe we come down a bit lower, but I do think we see the Swiss franc heading higher. And even if we get the Swiss franc coming down lower, I believe that the Swiss franc will not underperform the other markets that we're looking at. And in fact, on a relative basis, even if the Swiss franc comes down next week, I do think some of these other markets come down faster. And therefore, we should see, you know, uh, the likelihood that franc yen goes to the upside, CAD franc, Aussie franc, these markets actually fail to outperform the Swiss franc next week, even if it sells off somewhat. Next is the Japanese yen. Now the Japanese yen did actually start to soften once the new BOJ governor kicked yield curve or the scrapping of yield curve control or the adjusting of it into the long grass on the basis that, and he, his framework was one to one and a half years, that they are not projecting persistent inflation above 2%, which is what they want to see before they adjust or scrap yield curve control. As a result, this actually caused softening. And I do think we see a strengthening of the yen as we get more risk off or more deflationary scenarios coming into the global economy over the course of this year, between now and the end of the year. However, as it currently stands, we're still seeing softness in the yen. And I do think actually technically we could very easily be coming down to here. That would actually be a big A, B and a C. So any yen shorts, I think we actually have some pretty good room down towards the low over here. And then maybe at this low, if we fail to break out, this could actually start to signal the next leg up in the yen. But near term, I think yen shorts is still, as the scorecards are suggesting, and of course my opinions come from the data, that we should be looking to be on the short side of the yen still. Next is the CAD. The CAD actually failed to make a high last week. And as we see crude oil start to underperform, this is dragging the Canadian dollar down. And now, in fact, this is where we could see a third wave to the downside coming. Why? Because you have this kind of head and shoulders where, all right, it's not textbook, but what you're seeing is you're seeing a high, you're seeing a sell-off, you're seeing an attempt to rally this market back into new highs and failing. And then all the people who are buying, they look at this and say, okay, we can't break the high. This might be a mistake. I'm exiting my long position. You see the liquidation and the final bullish holdouts who are crossing their fingers and closing their eyes, they put their stop losses here. And that is the breakout mechanics which cause these bigger sell-offs. So I would be looking for a potential breakout below this low and also momentum. And this could very easily be, based on what we're seeing here, very easily be the break which 
essentially ends this consolidation and starts the next leg down in the Canadian dollar. I would not be surprised at all. So certainly US dollar CAD, if you want to take advantage of that, US dollar CAD next week before the breakout is where you usually want to get involved in these. That is going to be on my radar next week. Aussie dollar have been saying since the beginning of the year when we were testing these highs that I believe the Aussie dollar is coming back down to the lows. We are now breaking out to the downside. Very, very choppy pattern. What made this difficult is we've had an expanded triangle type pattern where we take out the highs and lows. However, the major breakout of this level is here. Once we break this low, we could very easily see some capitulation selling like this and uh, some strong momentum to the downside. So any opportunity to get involved in this in this area next week before the breakout is something I'm going to be interested in. And finally, New Zealand dollar, another market. We're testing these highs at the beginning of the year. And I said to you, this is running out of road. I'm looking for this to come back down to the low this year. It's taking its time as we, as we just consolidated here, as you can see. However, we failed at the high. Now look at the momentum. This is the breakout, major breakout, double top, confirmed below here, consolidating. If we break here, a lot of these buyers are going to get liquidated and this could very well see strong momentum to the downside past the 0 0.6084. If you think that, as I do, or I know for a fact that this is an increased probability of that happening, I don't know for a fact if it will happen, but I know when you get these consolidations that stop losses are placed here, so it increases the likelihood of this breaking with momentum. Well, the goal then is to be involved somewhere over in this area next week, so when it breaks, you know, you can put your stop loss to break even. You can avoid any volatility down here. That is what I'm looking for in the New Zealand dollar. And a break of this low could very easily see it coming down to the prior low in short order. I don't think it's, going, it's not going to happen next week, but, you know, certainly over the course of this year, as I've been saying throughout the weekly Forex forecast videos this year, I do think, you know, this potentially starts the journey down to this low now. Okay, so let's have a look at the markets themselves, starting with crude oil, as we always do. Last week, I gave you two areas that I was looking for, one for a potential short opportunity and one for a profit-taking opportunity. Now, I've got two levels on here again for you. I was, in last week's video, only looking for shorts, and I said to you guys, this kind of pullback here, I would be looking for potential reversals. We actually had intra-week, you can see this head and shoulders reversal here, and we're starting to make our way lower. So any pullback in crude oil, is viewed once again as the opportunity to look for shorts. I'm only interested in shorts down to roughly the 67 area. And again, if we pull back and we retest this high in the 74 area, this would be another opportunity to short this. But I'm only interested in shorts next week in crude oil. Next is Aussie dollar. Last week we had a big sell off. Look at this double top inch a week. Huge sell off. We've got the CPI report. And then we had this big sell off to the downside. I am looking to be short. I don't want to go and short this right down here because there's almost certainly going to be a consolidation first. This consolidation, look for this next week because this is the opportunity I'm going to be looking at for a potential short. I'm going to be looking down towards the max profit taking area for next week at the 0 0.6560. Just bear in mind what we talked about because we're looking at a short term trade here. So we're looking at you know, booking profits within the week. But just bear in mind, this is a major consolidation. So once we break this low, could actually break here with momentum, just for those of you who are slightly longer term minded in terms of these trades. So next week, though, for a short term trade, I'd be looking at max profit take in the 0 0.6560 area. Next is US dollar yen. We're starting to break out of this consolidation, as you can see, here's the previous high. So I'd like to see this go a little bit further if we could get momentum and then this consolidation, if we can get this next week, this would be the opportunity to look for longs into the previous high roughly at the 137.75 area. Next is US dollar CAD. Again, you can see the momentum. What's very interesting is this failure to make a low. This actually sets up an inverse head and shoulders. You can see there's a low, there's a low, there's a failure to make a low. And now we're starting to rally with momentum. Momentum precedes price. So this is telling us, this momentum here is showing us that this low has most likely failed now to take out this. So any pullback and correction next week is the opportunity to start to look for longs. And just bear in mind, although the short-term profit target is the previous high over here, that's the max profit taking area, that's pretty much all it might do next week, might push a little bit higher. But bear in mind, this is a major inverse head and shoulders reversal above here. So if you are involved, you might want to see if this can break with momentum and hold on to this for a couple of weeks. But short term, I am looking up to the previous high here as the next target. 
Next is Euro dollar. We have failed to break with momentum. You can see the lack of momentum and now we've reversed in this market to the downside. Momentum precedes price. I'd like to see this pullback as I do think we're due a correction first. Any pullback is viewed as the opportunity down towards the 1.0740 area. Look for this low potentially next week if we can start to sell off in euro dollar. Next is New Zealand dollar. Now last week we came up and took out the target area into CPI and this is what I was looking for last week. I was looking for the dollar to actually, for those of you who watched the video last week, I was looking for the dollar to actually sell off into CPI and then potentially get that reversal. We didn't really see it in the dollar index, but you can see in some of the pairs, we did see that and New Zealand dollar was a good one last week. We rallied into CPI right into the previous high and the target area highlighted and then we reversed. I wanted to see this in more pairs for the dollar last week, but mainly the dollar did nothing going into CPI. But this was a good setup from last week, pre-CPI. Coming into this week, we've had a huge sell-off. So again, this needs to consolidate. Really need to see this pause. Any correction next week is viewed as an opportunity only to go short in this market, down towards the previous low in the 0.6100 area. And the final dollar forex pair here, because we are going to look at some dollar kind of commodity plays, gold and silver, which I like, especially silver, but is the pound. Now the pound and the New Zealand are not rated as highly as these others, but I would still look for shorts in these markets next week. Any pullback in this market, maybe we pull all the way back and test the double top breakout over here, as you can see. Any pullback is viewed only as an opportunity to look for shorts in this market next week, down to the 1.23 area. So moving on to the franc pairs, there are three franc markets that I like heading into next week. And you can see here another double top inch a week in Aussie franc. So any pullback, perhaps a retest of the double top breakout is viewed as an opportunity to look for shorts in this market down towards the previous lows at the 0.5880 area. Next is franc yen. We actually have a big bull flag setting up because look at this momentum to the upside, driven this higher. Then we had the peak in the Swiss franc in the scorecards and we saw the Swiss franc weaken. So going into next week, I am looking at this as a big bull flag ABC. So any pullback in this market is viewed as an opportunity to look for bullish setups into the 153 area and potentially even slightly past this into the previous high. But once you get into this area, you start to run the risk of this market stalling out next week. And the final Forex pair is CAD Frank. We have also broken out of a potential consolidation here. You can see this, it doesn't quite look like a double top, but we've got this consolidation, we start to break. Any pullback, maybe we come back and test the highs once again. Any pullback is simply viewed as an opportunity to look for shorts down to the 0.6540 area. Okay, so wrapping up the video with gold, silver, and Bitcoin. Now I am bearish going into next week on all three of these, but to different degrees. Because of that strength in the dollar, that should be a headwind for all of these markets here. And I do think we see these coming down on balance. You can see out of gold and silver, the gold silver ratio exploded to the upside last week. That is actually a very risk off sign. You see gold outperforming silver when risk off starts to come into markets. And as a result, going into next week, I prefer silver shorts over gold shorts. And I do think when we look at silver, there's a very good pattern setting up for further downside next week. Okay, so starting with gold, we did trade into the major high, which I highlighted in previous videos here. You can see if I scroll out, this was the major high from over here and we failed. We actually failed with a first degree breakout, which is one of the weakest breakouts. You can see we didn't even manage to close or anything above here. So this is signifying further downside. It does actually add some confirmation towards that dollar bottom we've been discussing. However, I just don't think you can see this. What we have here is a developing double top because it would be confirmed down below here in silver. We actually have a confirmed double top. So, you know, confirmed patterns are better than developing patterns. However, I do think on balance this comes down and the next key level would be these lows over here. But if we can come down to the 1960, that's pretty much the max profit taking area for next week. So I do like shorts in gold, but I much prefer them in silver next week. Next is silver. Now look at the difference between gold and silver. Gold did not actually break the double top. Silver has. Look at this momentum. That's the liquidation you see and you want to see with reversal patterns. So going into next week, any pullback in this market is simply viewed as an opportunity to look for shorts into the 23 area. And I've highlighted this as gold because out of these, I do think this is actually setting up as one of the best markets next week. Either Forex, commodities, 
you know, or even crypto like Bitcoin, I do think silver is one of the best shorts. And last but not least, we have Bitcoin. Bitcoin has actually broken and confirmed head and shoulders pattern over here, as you can see. And I do think we're set for further declines next week. Interestingly, you can see the max profit taking area sits right at the prior high over here and here. So I do think there's a very good chance we come down to this area next week. And so any pullback in this market, simply for those of you trading it, should be viewed as an opportunity once again to look for shorts down to the 2520 area. So that is it for me for this week, guys. As always, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, why not consider joining us in the room each day where I go through these markets and the setups that I'm personally looking at with members on a daily basis for over 75 markets in different asset classes, including stocks, bonds, forex, and commodities. So if you'd like to know more about the benefits of GMT membership, why not check out the link in the description below and in the pinned comment where you can get a two week free trial, totally risk free. So have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you all next week.